kindergarten. Today's Bible lesson is about Jesus and the children. Children just like you. So before we begin our story, let's pray. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Jesus, I love you so much. And I want to know more about you. Open my ears and my heart and my mind to what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls. Well, before I get into this story, I want you to remember three things from today. So I'm going to say them now at the beginning, and then we'll review them at the end of the story. So the first thing I want you to know is say number one. I am wonderfully made. That means you are very special. Say number two. God loves me so much. He does. Say number three. God has a special plan for me. And we talked about that today, didn't we, in our morning devotional? We talked about how God has a wonderful plan for you. In fact, he's actually written like a book all about you and your life. And he's filled your, your life with wonderful stories, with a wonderful and special plan. And you're probably wondering, well, how does, how does that special plan happen? You just have to abide in Jesus or stay close to him. He loves when you come close to him. And so here's a story all about that. Jesus and the children. I got a hair right there. <laughs> the children loved to spend time with Jesus. So there's a picture of Jesus. And look, he's hugging a kid. He's giving out high fives. Look, they look so excited to be around him. And he's excited to be around them. But not only kids love Jesus, so did grown-ups. So did grandmas and grandpas. Everybody wanted to be around him. Why? Well, because he did miracles and he told special stories and he healed people. So not only did kids want to be around him, so did the adults. So in this story, there's a bunch of people around Jesus. All these big grown-ups are around him. And these little kids, they want to get to, they want to see him too. But here's the thing. When you're shorter and someone's taller than you and they're standing in front of you and you want to see what's in front of them, how do you get past them? Yeah, you kind of have to like sneak your way in and then you can see what everyone is looking at, right? Well, those kids thought just like you. There was a huge crowd around Jesus. And they thought, oh, those big grown-ups, I can't see Jesus anymore. So they pushed their way to the front. And this is what happened. The disciples, those were Jesus' followers and Jesus' friends and helpers. Do you know what they told the little kids that pushed their way to the front? They said, stop. Do not bother Jesus. He's too busy for you. What? Look at their faces. They look so sad. Because they thought, oh, I thought I was important to Jesus. I thought he wanted to be around me. Well, guess what? They were wrong. They shouldn't have said that because that's not how Jesus thinks. Jesus told his disciples, let the children come to me. Don't keep them away. In fact, disciples, you have to become like these little children if you want to be part of God's kingdom. 
I'm going to say that one more time. He told the disciples, don't keep them away. Let the children come to me. And if you want to enter God's kingdom, you've got to be like a little kid. Now, that might be a little bit confusing because you're probably thinking, what did Jesus mean when he said to the big adults, you have to be like kids to come into God's kingdom? Well, I want you to think about yourself. You guys are such a great example to all of us of how to believe, of how to trust, how to love, have faith, have a pure heart and mind. You know, every day I get so excited to come to work or school and be with you because you show me what it's like to have joy, what it's like to trust, what it's like to have purity. You teach me that because sometimes as an adult, you lose that. You don't want to believe in things so easily. It's hard to trust in things you can't see. But kids, you guys, are such an example of what it means to believe without even seeing. Like, whenever I teach you Bible stories, I know that you believe it. I've never had any of you tell me, um, Miss Kimura, I don't believe what you just said. I don't think that's true. All of you are like this. Oh! <gasps> That happened? Wow, God is amazing. You believe things instantly. Like when I said that a little boy named David defeated a huge giant with just a little rock, you didn't say, no, that's not possible. You believed it. When I told you that Jonah was thrown over the boat, but God saved him by having him being swallowed up by a big fish and he lived inside the stomach, none of you said to me, no, that can't happen. All of you believed it. Because kids always trust. They always believe. They always have that faith. And God knows that about you. And he created you to be like that. And he loves that you're like that. And he's using you to be an example to me and to everybody. So that's what God means to have faith like a child, to believe like a child. And then Jesus blessed the children. Look, they're sitting on his lap. They're telling him about their day. They're excited to see him. He's excited to see them. And you know what? That same Jesus here is the same Jesus today. Even though you cannot actually sit on God's lap or Jesus' lap right now, you can go to him and pray and tell him all the things that are on your heart. He wants to hear that. He thinks you're very special. So anything you say, he wants to hear it. And you know what, boys and girls? Some of us really want that. We really want God to just like hold us or... We want to like see Jesus' face or we want to touch him. And that may not happen right now here on earth. But guess what? If you put your hope and trust and belief in Jesus, one day when you get to heaven, you'll get to do that. You'll get to actually sit in his lap and be hugged by him. I know I can't wait for that. That's the first thing I'm going to do when I go to heaven. I think I'm just going to run to Jesus and give him a nice big squeeze. Um, and so I want to encourage you boys and girls to go to Jesus today and every day and speak to him and tell him how you feel. Tell him the things that make you happy and tell him the things that make you feel afraid or scared. He wants to know all those things. And you know what? Jesus doesn't just want you to talk. He wants to talk too. Did you know that? Did you know that God has a voice and he whispers it to your heart? I know that when I was little and even now, when I pray, I talk, but I always leave space for God to talk too. So 
maybe you'll ask him a question like, Jesus, do you love me? And I can hear the yes. Um, Jesus has lots of things to tell you, and he will. You just have to have your heart open to hear from him. And do you remember um, on Monday I showed you, or yesterday I showed you the four things we can do when we pray. P is praise. So when you go to God and you talk to him, you first praise him. Tell him all the things you love about him. R is repent. That means you tell Jesus things that you did. Uh, you confess your sins to Jesus and ask him to forgive you. Three was ask. So pray, repent, ask. Ask Jesus things that you want. Maybe you want your mom or dad to be healed of a cold. Maybe you're hoping that school will come, that you'll get to go back to school again and that the coronavirus will be all cured. You can ask those things. And the last one of, of P-R-A-Y, Y stands for yield. Yield means to listen. So when you go to Jesus, like how these kids are running to his lap, they're telling him, oh, I love you, Jesus. My favorite color is blue. Yesterday I went swimming in a pool. Uh, these are my friends. I love to play soccer. They're telling him so many things. But they're also going to listen to whatever he says to them. And how do you get to listen to Jesus? You have to just open up your ears and ask him, and ask him to speak to you. And he will. I promise you he will. Um, and so for today's worksheet for Bible, it says lesson 25, Jesus and the children. Glue the pictures of the children in the hearts around Jesus. So here are four pictures of kids just like you. You're going to cut them out, practice cutting on curved lines, and glue them where the white hearts are. And the Bible verse on the bottom says, let the little children come to me. That's Jesus saying, no, don't go away. Come, I want to be around you. And then on the back, you're going to circle the pictures that describe you. So I am a boy or a girl. You're a boy, you circle boy. You're a girl, circle girl. And how old are you? I am four, five, or six. I like to read or play with dolls. I like to eat hamburgers or pizza. You circle one that's your favorite. And then you're gonna write my name is, sorry, you're gonna read my name is and then write your first and last name. And on the bottom it says, all your days are written in a book, Psalm 139, 16. Wow, that means Everything that's ever going to happen in your life from your when you're first born to your last day on earth, it was written in a book, God's book, and he's filled it with wonderful plans for your life. So let's remember the three things we learned today. They are, say number one, say I, I am wonderfully made. Say number two. God loves me so much. He does. He wants you to be near him. He doesn't want you to be far away. He wants you to be close. Number three, God has a special plan for me. And how you get to experience that special plan? Well, just stay close to Jesus. Be a disciple. Be a follower. Listen to what he says. Do what he does. Pray to him and you will. You'll experience that special plan for your life. Um, I think that's it for today, today, boys and girls. So go ahead and do your worksheet and then you're all done. Let's pray before we close our Bible lesson. Can you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? And say, dear Jesus, I am special. I am loved. And I have a wonderful plan. Because you said so. 
Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you for creating me in a special way. And thank you for making special plans for my life. I love you, Jesus. And I want to stay close. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, so go out go, um, today or tomorrow or every day for the rest of your life. Practice being close to Jesus. Imagine you sitting on his lap, hugging him, telling him all the things that are on your heart, and then listen to him and hear what he has to say about you. He says very special things about you. All right. Well, I miss and I love you so much. Bye.